pam pam pum pi dim pam pam pum pi dim pam pam tem 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 jam pam pam pim pam pim pam 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 pum pi dim pam pam pum pi dim pam pam tem 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 jam 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 and he would yes say what is a calypso what makes a good calypso he said a good calypso is timely and timeless Just the mention of the sobriquet The Mighty Shadow brings to memory some of the most entrancing melodies and almost folkloric lyrics of his most popular songs. While many consider Winston McGarlan Bailey to be from Tobago, he was actually born in Belmont, Trinidad on October 2, 1941. He spent his early years in Lekoto, Tobago under the care of his grandparents Evelyn and Ellie Bailey. As a child, he enjoyed spending time in the outdoors and recalled bathing in the nearby river all day, while other children his age were more interested in playing games. He also recounted looking after cattle, donkeys, and sheep at his Lake Oto home. Winston was no stranger to music though, and was exposed to it since his childhood days, as his grandfather was a choir master and musician, and the house was always full of music. His sister Maria, with whom he was very close, was amongst the select few who heard his first calypso. Even at an early age, he realized that he had an aptitude for composing and could create lyrics and melodies quite easily. At the age of 15, Winston started learning guitar and later left his Lekoto home to go to a village in Charlottesville where a man named Joseph Kerr taught him how to play two chords on the instrument. Kerr was impressed by young Winston's progress and with the guitar showed his talent off to the villagers who in turn encouraged him greatly. Having no instrument of his own, he turned simple items into instruments such as bottle and spoon or an overturned bucket which became a drum. He was also greatly inspired by the music of Carnival in Lekoto, which was filled with the eerie rhythms of the traditional Blue Devils. At 16, he traveled to Trinidad to pursue his career in music and tried tirelessly to get to perform in a Calypso tent. He lived with his father in John John and later moved to Laventil. It was there, he said, he meditated and researched. He lived simply, trying to get work and even worked as a carpenter for a short stint. Most of his time there was spent alone and patiently awaiting carnival. Time passed and he finally got an opportunity in 1970 when tent manager Syl Taylor of the Young Brigade let Winston perform. In 1971, Shadow performed in Blakey's Calypso tent and it became his first regular slot. The day following his first performance in Blakey's tent, he performed at the Naprima Bowl in San Fernando and won the crowd over with his song, Modern Housewives. Shadow aspired to hold the title of Calypso Monarch for quite some time and came up against greats such as the Lord Kitchener and the Mighty Sparrow. His music was loved by the people, but for reasons many at the time could not understand, was not favored by the judges. He was always relevant. He was always yeah. relevant. But you cannot judge a Calypsonian or artists by, by, by competitions. So you, can't tell you can't judge them. In fact, I saw a years ago that it, it, it was not, Calypso was not even meant for competition. And some people read Calypso by competition, you can't read them. You can win 14 times. You can't read them. Okay. Shall didn't win because of the impediments in the way of competition. There are some judges who don't understand. Many judges don't understand Calypso. And many times, I'll give a simple example. I saw, I saw Brigo crying one day. I met him, Brigo wasn't crying. I said, where are you crying for? The competition all finished. He said, boy, then I don't understand the song. And he cried because some judges don't know what they're playing with. They're playing with my life. The Mighty Shadow's earliest title was King of the Road, also known as Road March, with his infamous bass man. He also plays second of the same with I Come Out to Play. Brother Resistance describes in his words, Shadow would have changed the, the, the carnival experience um, because in 1974 when he came through with the baseman um, he won the road match title and he came second to himself you know that kind of way and in doing so he would have opened the doors for a number of um, young artists and entertainers who, who at, at that point in time um, was telling themselves that they didn't really have a chance against the the two kingpins, um, the, the mighty Sparrow and the, and the, and the Lord Kitchener, yeah. but, but Shadow would open the doors. 
He won the 2000 Calypso Monarch title with What's Wrong With Me and Scratch Me Back and copped both titles of International Soka Monarch and Road March in 2001 with the ever-popular Stranger simultaneously, becoming only the second person to achieve this. He has been a great influence on Calypso as an art form and helped to shape Soka and solidify its popularity, also inadvertently bringing the bass line to the forefront. Well, it's, 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 it, what you're looking for is different approaches. For example, Shadow has another claim that some people don't know about. Shadow's a claim and it's a very good claim and that he invented Soka. And he made us very strong. He said that um, we four short rash of the eye. Sing so, sang Soka, he sang it. And that may be true, but Shadow didn't call it Soka. But Shadow played a Soka bass before Rashford, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely played it. Yeah, bass man, all I'm saying. Bass man, you're playing all kind of. Like yeah. 74. Yeah. Bass man, bass man, 74. You see? And you're playing with the bass. Yeah. Then you come, like Shadow is a, to, 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 a creator, you know? Yeah. So he said, look, to, look for originality and all different things, you see? So many things he did. You see, many things. Yes, and now when people examine his music and play his music, they will see all what he did. His contributions to culture over the years have not gone unnoticed though, and he has received awards from the small political party NJAC, was later awarded the Hummingbird Medal Silver in 2003, and was to be conferred an honorary Doctor of Literature degree from the University of the West Indies. Some of his most popular works also include Poverty is Hell, Dingole, You're Looking for Horn, and The Garden Want Water, just to name a few, and like his music, his wry sense of humor, unique musical voice and his very visage will always be remembered. While we mourn his passing, we will always celebrate the life of the mighty Shadow.